Hey, what is going on everyone? This is Wicked and today I'm going to be showing you the first unofficial release of Lineage OS by Fivax for Samsung Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus. A huge disclaimer before I get into the installation procedure. This ROM is definitely not stable, not even beta, it's just a pure alpha release with major non-working features like the calls, SMSs, microphone, data, NFC, camera, torch, Wi-Fi hotspot, etc. So this version is for those die-hard AOSP lovers who want to test or just to see how the Lineage OS feels and behaves on the Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus. The installation procedure is pretty complex compared to what we're used to on the Galaxy S8, so I'll also talk about it a little bit more than usual. Of course, you'll need TWRP in order to install this ROM. If you don't know how to install it, check the video in the card section. Once into TWRP, the first thing you should definitely do is a an Android backup. So click backup and tick all the boxes, especially the AFC one contains important IMEI information. Mount the device to your PC and copy the TWRP folder to a safe location on your computer so that it won't be deleted by mistake. Restoring the backup is done by going into the restore section of TWRP. If you have problems restoring it, you'll mostly need to reflash a stock firmware and install TWRP again. Both videos are listed into the card section. I didn't have to, but it's nice to know what to do if you encounter this issue. We're almost ready to flash the zip, but before, make sure you go into wipe and swipe to factory reset your device. This is a mandatory step. Then go to install and select the Lineage OS zip. The process will end in less than one minute, then go and install the open gaps package. All the files I used in this video are listed in the description as always. After the procedure is finished, click reboot and bear in mind that the first booting process will take some time, so be patient. And there we have it, the Lineage OS currently running on my Galaxy S8. Although it is a completely unstable release, it's great to see an OSP ROM running on a new Samsung device these days. So quick introduction, Android 7.1.2, Lineage OS version 14.1. And that should say it all. In this overview I want to cover some basic stuff, I'm not going to get into every detail possible. First of all, let's talk about the customization options. Take in mind that this is not a Resurrection Remix ROM and it doesn't have tons of customization features. At a quick glance you can find some little ones into the status bar menu on the settings app where you can show or hide the icons on the status bar, set the clock positioning, edit the battery style and some other little tweaks related to the brightness control. Apart from that you'll also get some customization options in the buttons section. Here you can customize the navigation bar buttons so if you're not familiarized like me with the back button on the left side you can change them up. And regarding the home button, the haptic touch along with the physical pressing doesn't do anything, so that's another bug that needs to be fixed somehow. Here you can also add some features to the power menu like the screenshot shortcut and that's pretty much with the customization options. I tried Substratum Team Engine and I couldn't get any themes to work, even if I got the room rooted with Super SU, it would still give me some errors, so yeah. I guess that's it. Of course you can edit your home screen with tons of wallpapers and widgets from the stock gaps package that's self-explanatory on a ROM like this. Now, a lot of people believe ASP ROMs are better in terms of performance than stock Samsung ROMs and that's what I will test right now in the performance section. For me, the user interface feels exactly the same as on the default Samsung firmware. But what about Geekbench and gaming purposes? The score I got in Geekbench was pretty impressive, really bigger than what I would expect or get on a stock firmware and the gameplay of the Need for Speed No Limit even though I couldn't get the FPS counter to work was significantly faster than on a stock S8 ROM. 
The RAM management is way better than on a stock firmware using almost 1.5 GB, approximately 14% of the entire available memory. Now let's talk about the features, mostly working or not, on this ROM. The first one is the split screen which I could get it working without a miss. Lock screen works great and smooth, download speeds are decent and Google Play app installation seems a little bit slow to be honest. Bluetooth seems to connect to my portable speaker but I couldn't get any song to play with the default music app. Somehow the Google Play Music app worked. YouTube doesn't let you use the full immersive screen on the Galaxy S8 so you'll have the bars, the black bars while playing a, a YouTube video. The video playback was great though. Clock app doesn't uh, want to cooperate, maybe that's because of the gaps package, I don't know. But in the settings app you have the default options you would expect from a stock Android, so no surprises here. Regarding battery life, this is not great either. I flashed this ROM at 79% and played with it for 40 minutes and a couple of reboots and now it's at 65%. That means a drain of 40% in 40 minutes. For what I can say, it can translate in 21% per hour under this usage. My conclusion may upset some of my viewers, but since Samsung does not release their sources, some important features like the iris scanner and camera won't ever work properly. There are tons of bugs to be fixed and as I said in the beginning of this video, this release is 100% not suitable for daily usage. Anyways, thanks again to Fivex for starting the development of this project and let's hope it will see better days from now on. Of course, if you want to restore your previous backup, all you have to do is to get again into TWRP and click restore. Select your backup and see if it restores perfectly. And I'm back on Renovate Ice 5.1. This was the overview for today, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and activate the bell icon so that you'll be notified with all my uploads. I am Wicked and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Let's Get Wicked and on Google Plus at Wicked is here. If you like my video, don't forget to press that thumbs up button. As always, until next time, take care. Wicked is out. Bye bye.